Good. Where are we on? Yeah. Good morning, guys. So David Lammy strikes again. So news of the day is David Lammy and the United Kingdom stopping export licenses for weapons into Israel. Now, before we go on with this video, guys, in fact, before we go on, guys, can you give me a like and a share and a subscribe and share me on your socials, guys? I really appreciate it when each and every one of you do that. David Lamy, okay, so he is the Foreign Secretary and, you know, it's come out in the news, in the mainstream, that he's cancelling 30 export licences into Israel. So what does this mean? Well, first of all, let's be under no illusion, all right, David Lamy doesn't, without, okay, I don't, right guys, I'm not going to be rude, okay, David Lamy has been told to do this, this isn't his decision, all right, there's a lot of people behind him, there's a lot of civil servants, there's a lot of backroom negotiations that goes on before David Lammy will make any speech. But let's just cast our mind back slightly to when he went on his visit to Israel. And, you know, Netanyahu snubbed him, said he, you know, he didn't want to meet him. Guys, this is all feeding into this narrative of a global war, the likes we have never seen before. And I'm talking a World War Three on an industrial scale, you know, and it's going to make the Second World War look like kids fighting in a playground. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're seeing this diversions now, guys, and I keep harping on about it. So, you know, if you've not, guys, I'll link the videos into the end where I talk about the diversions more, where the United States is going to focus in the Middle East, Britain and the rest of NATO are going to focus in Eastern Europe. That's it. I'm not going to say any more about it because there's more to this video than, you know, than we need to talk about. And there's a lot that people are not, there's a lot of dots that people are just not connecting. So let's cast our minds back to when... Um, David Lamy, you know, he said, right, we're going to sort out this Middle East crisis. We're going to, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to fix all these problems. Nobody even spoke to him. Now, in all negotiations, I don't think there's an exception here, guys. Tell me if I'm wrong. In all negotiations for them to work, you need to negotiate. Might be controversial to some people. Now, the problem with David Lamy is he's so polarised He's so fixated on one particular aspect. He's so identifying with one group of people, and this is the right way to do it. A walk is right, otherwise, you know, I'm not interested. You know, he's gone out there to the Israelis, and the Israelis have looked at him, looked at what he said publicly, and thought, yeah, we're not, we're not going to speak to him. Now, it looks, the optics of this look like it's a child, it's childish behavior from David Lamy. And this is, these are just the optics, guys, right? Obviously, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Now, obviously, from the outside, it looks like David Lamy went out there. Nobody had talked to him. So he's canceled arms, you know, export licenses. Now, something nobody's talking about, not one person on the mainstream media are talking about this. 30 licenses. Now, I don't know what these licenses are. I don't know how much that equates to in um, in pounds, but what I can 100% guarantee you is those companies who were, who were supplying those arms, they will now have orders cancelled. Now, I don't know if they're going to be financially reimbursed for those orders. I don't know what stage of those orders are. I don't know whether the, you know, I, I don't know how that's working, guys, but what I can guarantee is those companies will now be out of pocket. And I know what people are thinking. Oh, but they're arms companies. They're evil. They're this, they're that. That may be true. But most arms companies, the people who work for them, they, they're just trying to look after their families. You know, they may be a computer programmer and they're, computer pro and they're doing some sort of computer programming and they have no idea what it is. In fact, I would say 95% of the people who work in arms companies, they'll be working on on a computer chip, they'll be working on uh, fabricating a certain piece of um, steel that they have no idea what it's for. And then they just go home to their families, you know, and they and they want to live their lives out not like normal people, you know. People right at the top of the chain, yes, okay, you can argue that they're fat cats laughing and profiteering on war. But guys, I can guarantee you because I know a lot of them, all right, the people who work at the base level at these arms manufacturing companies who are going to be the first to be sacked because of, you know, potentially, guys, obviously, I don't know. You know, they're going to be the first ones to get sacked. You know, the people at the bottom who are right, you guys need to get these chips. You need to solder this, these 
I'm making this up, guys. I don't actually know what the what the products are. Maybe you you have to solder these components into these chips in such an order, or you have to CNC mill this certain metal into this, or you have to coat this in a certain um, coating, or whatever. You know, those people at the bottom level, they're the ones who are going to get sacked from this. So that's going to put more strain on the economy. How much? I don't know. But what I do think is really, in fact, let's just look at it quickly, guys. Let's just see what it's all about. Where are we? So UK suspends some arms export to Israel. The UK has been suspended some arms sales to Israel, saying there is a clear risk the equipment could be used to commit serious violations of international law. Foreign Secretary David Lammy said the UK will be suspending 30 out of 300, 350 arms export licenses. So not really that much, but it depends what components these are, guys. For example, you know, and again, I don't know what it is. If this says, well, let's continue reading, it, actually. Uh, affecting equipment such as parts for fighter jets, helicopters and drones. OK, let's just say that this is a spe specific chip for a fighter jet engine, you know. That fighter jet's not going to work anymore because it doesn't have that chip or it doesn't have that component. Again, if it's something to do with a helicopter rotor or something specific, something that's on license, you're, that helicopter is not going to fly. With the drones, again, you know, I don't know what we can produce in the United Kingdom that they can't produce in Israel. In fact, there's a there's a there's a rotary engine company that do pretty good rotary engines. So, guys, this is just me speculating, thinking off the cuff. So that could be rotary engines. Um, those of you who don't know, rotary engines are a lot more powerful. Their power to weight ratio is huge, but their lifespan is ridiculously low. So they're usually in drones that don't come back. So anyway, what I'm saying is this, although it's only 30 out of 350, it could be the vital part. So if you've stopped the, you know, these vital parts here, you could have literally stopped all that production overnight, just you know, all that capacity overnight. And again, I don't know, I'm speculating. An Israeli minister told the BBC that the decision sent the wrong message and was disappointing, but human rights group Amnesty International called the suspension too limited. So that's, you know, so that's the jux of it, guys. That's what, you know, that's what's happened. Now, the effectiveness of that, you know, the wider reaching, um, you know, how that's going to affect the situation on the ground, we don't know. What we can, what we do know is... Once you're a supplier to someone and they stop supplying you, you find another supplier. I can guarantee you guys, you know, once you've found another supplier, you don't go back to your old supplier. That's how the market works, guys. 100%. There's no exception. All right. If these things are on license and there's only a certain amount of companies that can make them, maybe we got, might get that work back. But the reality is David, uh, David Lamb has just put a load of, made a load of people unemployed. Now, I know what you're saying, the human rights, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the devastation that's been caused in Gaza. And that's right. But what I will also say, and I'd like to point to. UK arms sales reaches a record 8.5 billion as global tensions escalate. More than half weapons exports were repressive regimes such as Qatar and Saudi Arabia as sales doubled over the last year. So will David, and I'll put these articles in the uh, description, guys. British arms exports doubled during 2022 to a record 8.5 billion to the only pub only publicly available official figures reflecting escalating geopolitical uncertainties and fallout from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So the reason I'm sharing this with you guys is, you know, will David Lamy be as objective when he's supplying, you know, these Saudi Arabia and Qatar who have got a huge, huge, huge record? And guys, you know, now... I, I, some of the things that happen in Qatar, some of the things that happen in Saudi Arabia, they just wouldn't fly in the United Kingdom. I don't know why people are not out on the streets protesting. I don't know why people are not protesting. You know, why you don't have these feminist groups going to Saudi Arabia, protesting the treatment of women, protesting how they deal with people out there. You know, I don't know why that's not happening. 
I would like to think if David Lammy is being an unbiased political and his department guys, of course, because this thing here is, you know, it's not just David Lammy, he's got a department behind him. You know, I'm just curious, are they going to be as objective and are they going to be as conscious of human rights when they're looking at renewing, you know, weapons licenses for, you know, like, like we've just said, Qatar for Saudi Arabia? Or is this just, you know, or is this just a snub on Israel because David Lammy got kicked out of the office and he wasn't allowed to play with the big boys? I don't know, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. But this leads, guys. This leads this diversions, and I know I've mentioned it before, that we have a huge Muslim community in the United Kingdom. And if, you know, we get too involved in this war in the Middle East, then there's going to be a huge civil uprising. That's why we have to, on the outside of it, you know, that's why we have to be looking like we're not involved in that sort of stuff. And we're facing towards, sorry for you guys, it's that way, isn't it? We're facing towards Eastern Europe, towards the Russian threat towards Ukraine, towards supporting Ukraine. So everything we do now, guys, every all of these political decisions that you see made, in the back of your mind, just think, right, okay, so we're heading for a global war, industrial war, industrial scale. The United Kingdom is going to be with the rest of NATO in Eastern Europe, and the United States is going to be focusing on the Middle East. Right. If you think of that, everything becomes it starts to make sense. Otherwise, you just get these random events and you're like, what's that? What's going on there? What's going on there? And it doesn't make any sense. But if you if you use that filter, everything starts to make sense. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to mag to grid. I'll get you another video. I'll be answering your comments. And thank you for liking and subscribing and sharing my stuff.